Buenos dias y feliz año nuevo. That means Happy New Year. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another edition of Vocabulario Vivo. In today's episode, we're going to cover a topic that will be beneficial to both Spanish and English learners. False cognates, also known as falsos cognados. First of all, what are cognates, cognados in Spanish? Cognates are your friends. This is, not surprisingly, a Latin word derived, perhaps a little surprisingly, from the verb to be born. Co, of course, means with. So cognate, as an adjective, can mean related by birth or coming from the same parentage. It can also, more generically, suggest that two things are similar. However, it is most commonly used both as a noun and adjective in its grammatical sense, describing words that have descended from the same language. For example, car and carro, restaurant, restaurante, doctor, doctor, cost, costar, and everybody's favorite, no and no. You can see that some of these words have changed a little bit by a letter here or there, and others are exactly the same. That is because English, despite being a Germanic language, has been hugely influenced by French over the years, as well as borrowing from Latin and Greek directly. As a result, roughly 60% of our vocabulary is Latinate. Meanwhile, Castellano Spanish, long a minor dialect on the edge of an Arabic-speaking world, was able to retain what is possibly the purest Latin derivatives. Basically, the two languages took two separate rows to get to the same place. And with that in mind, let me clarify that while I do not have the same breadth of experience to be able to talk about the nuances of French and Italian and Portuguese, let alone Romanian in the same way, I do want it to be understood that much of what I will discuss today applies as well to these other languages because they too share the same linguistic heritage. For example, you can see the word doctor in those four other Latin languages. They're similar, though not identical. At least they share the same meaning. False cognates, on the other hand, are anything but your friends. They're double agents who appear to be working for one side when in fact their loyalties lie elsewhere. In other words, these are sets of words that look the same but have completely different meanings. This may be because they actually come from different roots and just look similar by coincidence, or it could be due to the fact that words and their meanings are always changing, and they often change quite differently in different cultures. For example, carro again is quite common in the Americas at least. They prefer coche in Spain. Italians use the same word, carro, but they only use it to refer to railway cars. Streetcars are exclusively automobiles or máquina. That's a strictly cultural difference. Back to Spanish, there's also the case of carro with one R. Carro and carro both come from Latin, but from two different words, carros, cart, originally from Celtic, whereas carros, meaning expensive, developed from Hebrew. They just happen to look and sound almost identical. That's right, caro with one R actually means expensive. As a language learner, how are you supposed to know that? It is very easy to get tricked by false cognates. The more similar they look, the more dangerous they are. And while not as common as real cognates, there are quite a lot out there. I will highlight four here today, but expect more episodes in the future because this is only the tip of the iceberg. First up, historia, which is both a cognate and false cognate. You see, historia can mean history, facts regarding things that happened in the past as in Estudiamos la Historia en la Escuela, we studied history at school. But it can also refer to 
fictional stories. Quiero leer la historia de Rapunzel. I want to read the story of Rapunzel. In English, there is a strict distinction between fact and fiction. Yet, in Spanish, they only have the one word for both. This has caused a lot of confusion for my students, who constantly forget that Tangled does not recount the history of Rapunzel. It can't, because she was never a real person. It is a story, not a history. Next, Resume and Resumen. For the record, I like to use the optional accent marks for resume in English because it avoids confusion with the homograph resume. All three terms do share a common ancestor, Latin re and sumere, meaning to take back, but they diverged a bit along the course of historia. Spanish resumen means summary, as in the power to turn a hundred sentences into one and it isn't hard to make a logical connection between that idea and professional resumes, which are, in essence, a summary of your life's work experiences. They give readers the big idea with only a fraction of the details. Nonetheless, English speakers use that term very limitedly for something that most of the rest of the world refer to as a CV, short for curriculum vitae, literally, Latin for the race course of life. In the United States, only academics use CVs. They have a slightly unique format. Another popular Spanish term for resumes is a hoja de vida, which translates as page of life. Now, my first two examples were sources of confusion that I've encountered again and again in the classroom. These next two are more likely to get you into trouble out on the streets. Crudo is a perfectly harmless Spanish word that most commonly refers to raw or unfinished things, including crude oil. From that stem the meaning tough or harsh, as in crudos recortes, tough budget cuts. Such usage is most common in Spain, whereas the hungover definition is more common in Mexico. The English equivalent shares the same basic root of basic and rough, as you might have caught from the cognate rudimentary. A recent movie, The Crudes, is actually a play off of that. Their name suggests that the cavemen characters are completely unsophisticated, no better than animals. A crude drawing could be just a quick, rough sketch, like the book pictured above, on the other hand, it could also be a picture of someone's middle finger or, or of their butt. The danger of using crude in English is that it's closely related to the idea of rude. Uncultured members of society, after all, can be very rough around the edges, immature, impolite, and inappropriate. Finally, Let's take a trip back to ancient Greece, where a new group of philosophers known as the Cynics were promoting the idea that true happiness comes from rejecting society's love of wealth and power in exchange for a life of virtue. Millennia later, we in the English-speaking world have come to associate their name with a deep mistrust of human nature due to most people's continued love for those same vices. A cynic tends to be pessimistic because the only thing they do trust is that people are selfish and bad things usually happen as a result. We prefer to call ourselves realists, but the reality is that cynical people tend to be rather depressing. Occasionally, the word can be extended to refer to unscrupulous people doing bad things, but usually it just focuses on our skeptical attitude. See all those cognates? Now, in Spanish, it's possible to use cínico in the same way, but I'll never forget one day in class when I was trying to explain the difference between optimism and pessimism, repeatedly referring to myself as a cynic and getting weird looks from some of the students. No one else wanted to admit to being a cynic as well, certainly. Eventually, I uncovered the reason. In Spanish, as well as Portuguese, cínico, both an adjective and a noun, describes people who have no shame or respect. That can describe something as mundane as 
rude, defiant teenagers, as in my sentence, but you might alternatively end up calling yourself a pervert or even a sociopath. Suddenly, I was very embarrassed, you can imagine. That's why I'm here today trying to save you from that same trauma. Instead of being cynical, give a skepticismo a try for a change. Well, that's it for now. You've been warned. Thank you, gracias, as always, for watching. You are always welcome to leave some more false cognates below in the comments or an email to me, along with any questions or practice sentences you've written yourself. Don't forget to check out my other videos at apexlanguages.com as well. Hasta luego, amigos. Quédense felices, sanos y salvos. Hasta la próxima.